And we're live here at the scene of a police chase that ended with a suspect in a ditch. He's accused of murder. That story live coming up. You can try and get a hold of uh, the crisis negotiation team and get them to start this way. A long chase follows an Illinois sheriff's deputy being shot, and we now have learned that lawman has died. It is an active Thursday evening, everyone. I'm Titor Lopez. Thank you for joining us. The armed standoff near Lincoln is tonight's top story. We begin this Thursday with breaking news now out of Logan County, where this chase has stopped. But it began early this morning in the northern Illinois city of Rockford. That's quite a distance, nearly 175 miles away from the starting point. So this was the scene for hundreds of drivers, including a viewer who took cell phone video of that high-speed chase, believed to be at over 100 miles per hour. A timeline now. Just after 9 a.m., a U.S. Marshals Service task force trying to serve an arrest warrant for 39-year-old Floyd Brown at a hotel in Rockford. A sheriff's deputy with McHenry County was with that task force when he was shot. It's believed he was shot through the door. Early this afternoon, state police reported the deputy had died. He's now been identified as Jacob Keltner. Another woman in that hotel room with the suspect, Floyd Brown, also shot. She was treated and released with survivable wounds. Police believe that Floyd jumped out of his third floor hotel room, got in a car, and took off. Then the high-speed chase, which ended where we find my co-anchor, Caitlin Knute, live tonight in Logan County, where Mr. Floyd Caitlin may still be armed. So, Tyler, right now we are along a side road that runs parallel to 55. In fact, that's what you see here behind me. I'm going to have my photographer zoom in. You see all those cars there? Uh, when we talked to state police earlier, they estimated at least 40 law enforcement vehicles over there. We've counted maybe as many as 60. No doubt. Thank you, Caitlin. We'll hear from her in just a few minutes. And this run from police has roots in McLean County. That's just one of several jurisdictions that wanted Floyd Brown for other active investigations. Bloomington is where we continue our team coverage live now with Kyle Beachy. Kyle? As we've said, we're following breaking news that chase that has ended in Logan County. We're hoping for some developments right now. We want to go back live, as we promised we would, to Caitlin Canute, live on the scene in Logan County. Caitlin, what are you seeing now? We start tonight with breaking news. Again, police are working in an emergency situation, not on the roadways, though, as we saw 24 hours ago. This one is a shooting in a residential area not far from the Peoria Zoo. It is Thursday evening, everyone. I'm Tyler Lopez. And I'm Caitlin Canoe. Thank you for joining us. At this point, we do know one person was shot in the neck. It happened in the 400 block of East Arcadia Avenue. That's off of Knoxville, just north of I-74 in Peoria. Our own Lauren Melendez is standing by live in that area. She just spoke with police. Lauren, what can you tell us about this very active scene? All right, to break the news now, we have another domestic incident, this time under investigation by Peoria Police. This dates back to September 8th. Police were called to the 1200 block of South Matthew regarding an unresponsive child. It has taken a few months, but today they're announcing the arrest of the baby's father, Kyle Purser, age 20, arrested without incident for murder and taken to the Peoria County Jail. Again, this information just coming into our newsroom. We will have more on this coming up tonight at 6 and 10. But again, arrest in an unresponsive incident uh, dating back to September. To other news tonight, the jury for Cynthia Baker, the woman on trial for allegedly killing her eight-year-old stepdaughter, is now set. Nine women and three men will hear the evidence in the case and decide whether Baker could spend most, if not all, of her life in prison. Stephanie Rodriguez was in the courtroom today. She joins us with the latest. Stephanie? We have breaking news tonight. More insight into why a Twin Cities surgeon faces a sexual assault case. It is Friday evening, everyone. I'm Tyler Lopez. And I'm Caitlin Knuth. Thank you for joining us. Court documents indicate the alleged assault took place at a woman's home, a woman who says she was a patient of Dr. Sean Kink. These new details just coming into our newsroom make up tonight's top story. We've learned an order of protection that was just extended today by a judge shows a woman claims on December 6th Dr. Sean King came to her home and the two had talked of her struggles with medical bills. She claims he helped her to the couch and that's when he forced sexual contact on her before promising to help with her disability paperwork. The nature of her disability is unclear. The documents do describe some type of surgery though. Dr. Kink worked at McLean County Orthopedics in Bloomington. The CEO there is stating today that Kink no longer works there. He pleaded not guilty in court today, and Sean Kink has a status hearing scheduled now for February 20th. So some of the specific details involved in this case are graphic in nature. We've chosen to withhold some of those now. We'll have more on this story tonight at 6. You can also check our website, week.com. What made you want to talk about this today? 
because no one's really sat down with me and asked about the family we lost. They just want to talk about everything else. That woman you just heard from is Samantha Allwood. Her two-year-old daughter, Rose, was killed in April in a trailer fire that also claimed the life of Samantha's nephew, niece, brother-in-law, and grandmother. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Lauren Melendez. Much of the story's local and national coverage is focused on the nine-year-old boy charged with murder in this case. But Samantha is saying there's more to the story. The mother of that nine-year-old has now been placed on a gag order after she spoke publicly on the incident for the first time this week. But her sister Samantha says in her darkest moments, when she contemplated taking her own life, Rose was the one who gave her a reason to keep going. And that's why she wants people to know her, how important her family was and still is. Today, Samantha shared some video of Rose having fun with her uncle, Jason Wall. He was one of the five people killed in that fire. Samantha says Jason was far more than an uncle to her daughter. He was a father figure. He loved that little girl. And he always promised me that he would protect her. That night, how they ended up finding them was right next to each other. So he protected her until the end. He was with her when I couldn't be. So she didn't go alone. And I think that's one of the biggest things that helped me. Samantha also says the loss of her daughter is especially hard because she recently found out she has a 5% chance of ever having another child. It just hurts because I can't have any more kids. Or if I do, it'll be basically as my OB explained it, finding a needle in a haystack. Well, the 21-year-old mother adds if she did not have such a strong support system, she would not be able to continue and says her family is sad, but they are not broken. We'll be sharing the rest of her story Monday night right here on 25 News, including how Samantha says she wants justice for her family. Now, if you or anyone you know is experiencing thoughts of suicide, please reach out for help. The number on your screen is a 24-hour hotline staffed with professionals who are standing by. All of those locations and information on where you can find them are on our website, week.com. 25 News at 5. Jenki, would you agree to an on-camera interview with us to talk about... Today, the uh, emphasis is on these two bills. However, uh, you can look on our website and see everything we know. But so don't you do believe... And that's about all I'm going to say. The questions continue to add up, but as you can see, Catholic leaders from here in central Illinois reluctant to offer answers. Good Thursday evening, everyone. I'm Tyler Lopez. And I'm Caitlin Canute. We will get to that entire video you just saw a snippet of when we finally got to talk to Bishop Janke, trying to talk about ongoing sexual abuse allegations. But first, we do have the reason he and other Catholic leaders held a rare joint press conference in Springfield today. It is tonight's top story. While we were in Springfield, our crew also attempted to ask the bishop questions about another issue, allegations of abuse within the Peoria Diocese. As we've reported, we have tried repeatedly to go through the proper channels, making formal requests for interviews with Bishop Daniel Jenke. You'll recall most recently, after a new report releasing the names of additional priests and clergy members accused of abuse, we tried to reach out to the diocese at least three separate times to no avail. Before that, we called and emailed repeatedly before our special report last month on the same subject only to be given press releases, if any answer at all. And that's why Caitlin Pearson, along with our sister station, Heart of Illinois ABC Today, tried to use the opportunity to ask Bishop Janke to finally sit down with us face to face. Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. And again, our attempts to talk to the diocese come after last week's report naming 29 priests accused of abuse within the Peoria Diocese, as opposed to the 26 still listed on their website. That report also named at least 10 other people who were either priests accused of abuse elsewhere, but had still served in the Peoria Diocese, or were clergy members or laypersons. Still, as of right now, none of those additional 10 names are on the Peoria Diocese website. We now turn to a 25 News exclusive where a young boy was tackled to the ground by a Peoria security guard after stealing another girl's cell phone. It was an incident that was caught on camera. It happened outside of the Landmark Recreational Center. Although police did not specify the boy's age, you can hear onlookers at times yelling, he's only 10 years old. 